hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel please if you haven't subscribed please consider subscribing so on this video i'm going to be talking about market resets and how these market resets actually relate to london patents so <clears throat> You know, if you are to talk about market resets, you have to start some way. You can't talk of market resets without knowing how to count levels. So please, do not watch this video without watching my videos, my videos on counting levels using part one, moving averages, and then it's part two, using the TDI because. That's a very important concept you should understand before we talk about market resets. So what are market resets? We can actually talk of market resets as being <coughs> as being a way of BTMM of doing top down analysis. So market resets are BTMM way of what? Of saying top-down analysis so in btmmm btmm we don't really say top-down analysis but we say market resets right so on market resets what do i really mean when i'm talking about market resets so let me go to my galaxy notes so that i can explain what i will be talking about the theory part so that you understand the concept because these things guys they are about the concept so what am i talking about guys so uh, on this video <laughs> market resets so we should start by what counting uh, levels so for simplicity reasons i'll use the h1 time frame because i use the h1 time frame you can actually do this for m15 and then you go down to m5 and then you define your entries on m1 but for now let me use the what the h1 time frame so we said the market forms in m a1 a2 a w v1 v2 and in m right so if you go on what on m15 what are you going to see you're going to see in m another m one two three one two three one two three right so right so what are market resets so market resets i said they are a way of doing top-down analysis i know i tried to introduce this concept on on the previous video on how to count a btmm method using the tdi <coughs> So you can think of market research as a way of doing top-down analysis. And we said, remember, if you actually watched the video on use, counting levels using moving averages, you also note that one level on H1 is equal to three levels on M15. So what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm saying this is equal to three levels. Yeah, this is equal to three levels this is equal to three levels so as for this part i couldn't finish drawing so you'll be expecting something like this this is the structure you'll be expecting to find there and so right as i have talked about these market resets now there are two types of market resets. There is type one, which is called a non-confirmed market reset. And then we've got what we call a what? 
a confirmed market reset. So what is the difference between a non-confirmed market reset and a confirmed market reset? So the difference really lies on where you find these market resets. So a market reset, a market reset, the normal one, which is the confirmed one, is usually found at these points. So we said on M1, we have this drop and then a pullback. Here you will see this drop on H1. On M15, you see these three levels and then a pullback. So we're saying on M15, you will see a peak, while at least on H1, it's really a pullback. But on M15, it's what? It's an M. So it's sort of like on M15, it helps us to do entries. You get the, this is the top down analysis part of of market resets so like i said this drop this will be equal to this it forms a a w the it reverses and form another peak there and then it moves down on m15 so this is what we call a what a confirmed <coughs> a confirmed market reset so, what is a non-confirmed market reset? A non-confirmed market reset is usually seen when we've got a reversal on the time frame of analysis. Let's say you count levels using H1. So, if there is a reversal pattern on H1, like an M or a W, you know that on M15 you see a what? A non-confirmed structure. So, a non-confirmed structure, we are really saying... Remember, you have to watch a video on how to count levels using the T-Dye. We're saying if you see an M on H1, we're saying this is equal to this. This neck of the M is equal to a W and M15. This second leg is equal to another peak. Is it clear? <coughs> so we've got one, two. On M15, you have... One, this, usually here you see a 200 on M15, here you see what, a 50 on H1. But anyway, this is not what I, I want to zone in about. I want to zone in on market reset. So <clears throat> now we've got a what, non-confirmed market reset in the what a confirmed market reset so why is this um, important why is it important to know about market resets for you to make trades on btmm you must understand the concept of what of market reset so without wasting your time let's go to charts so that you don't say yeah i was in 20 what 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 so let's go to the charts right this is a very good example of what of ways you can use a market reset so i said you have got two types of market resets a non-confirmed man market reset and a confirmed market reset i said a confirmed market reset is used to to confirm trend continuation Therefore, it means that if you are to trade confirmed market resets, it means if you are looking, let's say you are looking at the one hour time frame chart, you are expecting that all moving averages are fanned out or above the price. And number one, it's not a peak. If, it's, if it is a confirmed market reset, it is not a peak trade. So... And then if it is a non-confirmed, it is used to trade for entries on reversals. So what am I saying? <coughs> right. <coughs> if you watched your video on counting levels using the TTI, I said if the red line crosses the yellow line, that's a peak, right? You look at the chart. If you see that there was no 13 and 50 cross, you know that that's a peak trade. So a peak trade is equal to red line crossing yellow line plus there is no 13 and 50 cross on the price. 
so that would definitely mean that your bias is selling but then the price or the charts you have not yet confirmed that were what was selling which is different if you had to talk of this area here this whole area means that on h1 there was 1350 cross were already going down the 200 ema was above the 50 was above 13 was above there was 13 and 50 cross definitely this was a what a sell trade and so this was a confirmed market reset this was not a conf this was a non-confirmed market reset so what am i saying let me go on m15 <clears throat> so here marks our what our peak so we're saying on m15 we expect to see a non-confirmed market reset so what am i saying we expect to see and as you can see let me cancel So this is a non-confirmed structure. The the TDI also said something. Don't forget red and yellow cross there, saying we are now selling. The red crossed again. We are now buying, and then the red line crossed again, saying we are now selling. So this was a what? This was a non-confirmed structure, which is which is different from. If we look at this this structure here on h1 remember the yellow line was already above the red line there was a recross of the price line on the re on the red line and then it crossed again confirming that we are now going what we are now going down so there it would mean that this whole area was a what was a confirmed market reset now talking about a what london patterns so what are london patterns how do they relate with what with market resets so you can think of market resets as a way of doing top-down analysis and then london patterns are there to facilitate entries does it make sense so what am i talking about i'm saying whether it is a confirmed or non-confirmed structure if you are saying this is a non-confirmed market reset fair and fine but then how do you end so before we talk about how we actually end you need to understand the sessions you need to understand the sessions and also i'll explain how London patterns are also related to volatility indices. The, why there is so much confusion whether do London patterns really exist on on the volatility indices? So let me look for a picture. Right. So I was saying an Asian session starts from what? From zero 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 which is 12 midnight to 8 a.m. And then a London session starts from 8 a.m. to what? To 3. And then from 3, we now have New York session. And then we go back to tomorrow. It's a continuous. Remember, these offices, don't forget that wherever you are right now, if you are watching this video at 2 p.m. in another country somewhere, it's in the middle of the night and people are sleeping. So this also it applies for trading. So in the Asian session, they are open up to what to 8 a.m. When they are now, I don't know whether those are their waking hours. Now when they maybe it's now 4 
p.m. or whatever in Asia. That's when it it's what it's in the morning in the what in the in in London, and then so on so on so on. But I think you get the point that some way right now. So it's just changing offices that the market can't close because a certain country, uh, their people are sleeping. So we just have to change the what the offices. You get the point. So how is this important to understand sessions? <coughs> The concept of London patents came in because of the <coughs> came in because some of the pairs would move more in their sessions. What do I mean? Let's say if this is Euro USD, we know that Euro USD moves well in the what in the London session. Does it make sense? European USD pay Euro london therefore it moves well in the what in the london session however it's not really about saying london but it's about the concept because uh, the concept allows you to make trades it's not about saying hey i expect a pattern or a london pattern to appear it, it's it's called that because remember when these things were being made or whoever invented ptmm made this because you are trading what you are trading currencies but the concept is what really matters it's not really about hey london hey, Asian. because some of the if you are you are actually using ptmm you know that some of the best setups who sometimes okay in the asian session so it's not really about the the saying I only trade from eight a.m. to two or to three or to wait or whatever time, but it's about the concept. So here yeah, I'll teach the concept, not necessarily about hey yeah, it is to okay because on the volatility indices, it's not really that you expect sessions because volatility indices always open 24 hours whatever 24 7 so yeah it's about the concept so what are the types of what of london patterns right so as i was saying <coughs> so they are the london patterns are therefore necessary to make what to make entries so where do you expect to find these these london patents so you expect to find these london patents london patents are setups they are not really like things you should expect in the london sessions but they are setups that should be that should be clear because some of you are thinking why is this guy talking about sessions or london pattern or why is it a london pattern like i said it's called london because people who first introduced this they were trading currencies and among these currencies some of the pairs move well in the london session so they thought these setups only present in the what in the london sessions therefore they are called london patterns but in reality these are just setups which were popularized because they only occurred in the what in the London sessions. I hope it makes sense. But anyway, so where do we really expect to find these what these London patterns? London patterns are found on market resets. So I was saying you have done your level counting. You have seen that probably the pay will reverse at this point. What do you do next? If it's, it is a peak, you know that definitely this is a what? A non-confirmed market reset. If it is a trend continuation, you know that it's a what? It will definitely form a what? A confirmed market reset. Then, how do you then make trades there? You make trades by what? By using London patterns. I hope it's now clear. So we are saying here, yeah, if you were to enter a trade, 
you were definitely going to find one of the what you were going to find one of the london patterns so how many types or oh, what are the types of london patterns so let me talk about the types of london patterns right there are three types of london patterns we've got a type one so a type one so ideally this would be what would be an asian session then it is to break the the high or low of the world of the asian asian session and then it continues to give remember a stop hand so here you are trading a stop hand guys and you are trading a stop hand so always remember a second leg the reason why people trade the second leg of a of the btm mp is because the second leg is a stop hand and how do you then do that you use my market resets and then to enter market resets that's when you want to use london patterns i hope it's simple i'll go to the charts and explain so if it's a buy setup <coughs> you're expecting what <coughs> a stop and remember is always done to trip traders so it's done in the opposite direction so that you are tripped in the selling position and then the market reverses so here you know maybe you don't know how to trade so they give you another w here you buy and then because they know that their buyers were selling they trap you this side you lose your money so <coughs> market resets are there to tell you that my guy or young lady our buyers is going that way so you can anticipate that in asian station or in the london or whatever london pattern you're expecting you know that the stop stop and will be given in the opposite direction and that's when where you are uh, you are supposed to what to take your trades so i hope it's clear guys so <coughs> this is the type one then moving on to type two so type two we've got what asian range here we've got this price fails to break the high or low of the word of the asian session so it gives an m there and then it continues to go down yes same thing applies it gives an, a w and then it continues to go up and then we've got a what a type three type three a type three we've got the asian session this one We'll do this we'll range and then we'll give you what an m in the mid of the asian session range and then it will continue to go down or it will do something like this so yeah <coughs> those are the three types of what of london patterns so why is it important that you understand this London patterns now we are now going to the what to the chart so that i show you how you approach a trade when you are what when you are facing these these the market when you are faced with the mat with the broker so let's go to the charts right now that we now know about market resets and london patterns now how are the two related so let's look at what let's look at this pair so on this pair we see that the red line and the yellow line have crossed so we know that we are now looking for what a sale bias so on each one it means if you had seen that the red and the yellow line had crossed you know that you are now looking expecting the what the second leg and simple guys so right on well, anticipation of the second leg you know that the market this is a peak so you are expecting something like this 
so you expect to see something like this though it hasn't happened but you know that something like this will definitely happen so fair and fine you know that something like that will happen you now think ha maybe what one of the london patterns will form so remember this is the next day or oh, the cross happened at 300 which is 3 a.m so what you do you know that the asian session starts from 0000 to 0800 so you just do this you do this you go on what you go on the m15 time frame right on m15 time frame i said differences of type 1 type 2 type 3 is on whether the m is formed after breaking the highest point on what on the asian range or it doesn't break but it maintains the high of the asian range or it's in the mid of the what of the asian range so what do you do there you can see that the asian session the highest point marked by the orange line so this is a what is an asian is the asian session so you know yeah there is also an indicator which can actually help you something like this if you have seen something like this the blue like this blue thing is the asian session it this is the indicator which marks sessions the red one is the what is the is the new york and then most people don't like to put the london session in, in a color so they usually leave it like that so if you are using a pc it's actually easy you just know that if some price is in the blue area you don't trade and then when it breaks out <coughs> you know whether to maintain the line it will break out like this maintain the line or bounce on the mid either way it's about the concept guys not about these indicators that's why i prefer using moving averages and what in the tti right <coughs> now that you have marked the what the session you see that this was the highest point of the asian session this was the lowest point of the asian session because the asian session started 0000 to 0800 then you see that the first leg broke the highest point of the what of the asian session so you now know that definitely price will form the what will, will form a london pattern type one so you can anticipate that this was the what the type one london pattern therefore you could sell away close of what here close below the 13 ema but i'll make a proper video on how you actually make this trade you can actually see if you actually watched the previous video on how to count levels using the tti you see the significance of this but anyway i won't dwell much into it and then <coughs> we are now looking at the what at the confirmed market reset so again you can see that here the red line in the mbo had crossed so we know that we are in a what in a sale we have got a sell bias then so when do we start looking for this bias when the and you see the yellow is above the red is was was below the red was below below the yellow line and then the price came in and recrossed so when it recrossed it simply told you that expect a what a market reset on m15 time frame so what do you do let's mark again so this is the point when 
the red line and the or the signal line and the price line crossed signifying that expect you want expect a market reset on m15 time frame so what do you simply do you do this zero 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 right as you can see this was the lowest point of the what of the asian session this was the highest point of the what of the asian session then the price moved out just to trip those who don't really know what they are doing remember the yellow line was above the signal line so we're in a downtrend so we're expecting a what a market reset and to enter such a trade we said you must look at london patterns so here you see that price bounced on the highest point so it failed to break the highest point of the what of the asian session meaning that this whole structure was a what was a london pattern type 2 does it make sense yeah it price went down <coughs> right let me look for another currency pay gpp usd <coughs> ah let me talk about this structure <coughs> yeah let me look at this one so here yeah, as you can see we always start from the what we always start from the right again we talk of the what of sessions luckily here i had marked everything so it will be just easy so number one we start with the what with the yellow line being below the red line so it means we are in a uptrend and number one so you are expecting market resets so for starting from here you know that this was a confirmed market reset as for these other two these were what these were non-confirmed market resets because there was no 13 and 50 cross however the tti was saying we're now buying so it means that's a peak on h1 and on m15 you're expecting what a non-confirmed reset i hope everything is now coming together i hope everything is now coming together so here you know that when the price line crosses the signal line it it is simply telling you that my guy expect a what a market reset here the 13 and 50 have crossed so we're expecting a what a confirmed market reset not a non-confirmed non-confirmed is for peak trades only and what is a peak a peak you see it when the tti is now telling you to buy and on the chart there is no 13 and 50 cross that's how you see what a peak i'll talk more up on another video but for this video for you to understand market research are for you to do top down analysis london patterns are for you to make entries does it make sense so let me quickly visit the charts so i think everything was marked you can actually go and check the charts yourself so like i said this was the highest point this was the lowest point we're expecting what an upward move the price here broke the lowest point of the what of the asian session so we know that this is a type one and as you can see the market here formed in what a w entry somewhere there but i'll talk more about the entries i don't want to pre 
preempt my presentation on what on entries right let's go to what let's just choose another example <coughs> right let's talk about this pay again we know that this is an uptrend how do we know that the signal line was above the what the yellow line so we were expecting what a confirmed market reset so right what were our expectations so what do we do as usual we do this <laughs> remember there is an easier way to, to doing it but it's all about the concept it's not really about a yeah, blue indicator a yeah, beautiful indicator no so eight ATM then the highest point Is this guy's is this a proper half? <laughs> I can't really because I know the Fibonacci is not doesn't really draw a half. Fifty percent is fifty percent really half? I'm not sure guys. I can't really tell. So for this one, let's see. Where's the fifty percent? Hmm maybe the fifth percent was the so this one didn't really quite fit into a type 3 london pattern but anyway let me look for another pay yes the card <coughs> yeah the yeah this was a non-confirmed structure because you can see that the red line is above the the yellow line here yeah, it gives it gives you a signal that my guy expected what an unconfirmed reset so you know that here yeah, so let's go to the charts and see what's really happening remember it's from what it's up to is it eight so ah, this is definitely a type what Yeah, this is definitely type one. I I can't be repeating myself, guys. <laughs> All right, let's go to volatility indices. Right, volatility indices. So again, I said it's about the what? It's about the concept. If you understand the concept now, it becomes easier with practicing. So here we've got a red line crossing the what? The yellow line. This means we are now what buying. <laughs> so, oh, what else should we do then? Oh yeah, thank you, Tapiwanash. Right, like I was saying, the red line crossed the yellow line. We are now buying. On the price, there is not eighteen and fifty cross. So this is definitely what a peak. So. This peak has got this, so we're expecting something there. It means is that W which which is like this. So anyway, <clears throat> what do you do? Here you can't be using sessions. It's different from my from from what from currencies. On currencies, you know that if it's a if the pay has got USD at the XXX USD, you know that that pay will definitely move well during the what during the London during the London session. So that's why you must expect setups during the London pattern. Don't trade another another time which is not the what which is not the London session. 
for volatility now is a bit different how is it different here you don't have the market can move in time it doesn't really follow sessions so what you do you use your tdi for what for knowing the you use your tdi and you use your what your knowledge on price also price action may actually play a role so what am i saying here you see that this was definitely a psychological a support and then we've got if you go on m15 so let's mark this area So like I said, here you know that, so you are using many things guys, but the PTMM is enough. And so you know that this was a what? So we've got something like this. The TTI, the TTI, the TTI. Remember I said a peak on M15 is seen by what? Is seen by cross of red line in the yellow line or the MBO bar MBO line. That also applies to every example I was giving. So on every example, please go back and check if you were seeing this setup. This, if you see that you're seeing this setup, it means it's very important and you should be preparing yourself for the what for the next lecture. In the meantime, please keep on practicing. Thank you very much for being patient with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please consider subscribing. Mwah.